This is Akash Vani in the program Spotlight. Now we bring you discussion on the growth and development of atomic energy in India. The participants are Professor Ashok Jain, nuclear scientist, and Dr. Nimish Kapoor, science communication specialist. In a historic milestone marking entry into the vital second stage of India's three-stage nuclear program, Prime Minister witnessed today commence commencement of core loading at India's first indigenous fast breeder reactor at Kalpakkam, Tamil Nadu. India has developed comprehensive capabilities spanning the entire spectrum of the nuclear fuel cycle. Government had approved in 2003 the creation of Bharatiya Nabikiya Vidyut Nigam Limited Bhavini to construct and operate India's most advanced nuclear reactor prototype fast breeder reactor PFBR. In line with the true spirit of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, prototype fast breeder reactor has been fully designed and constructed indigenously by Bhavini with significant contribution from more than 200 Indian industries, including MSMEs. When commissioned, India will only be the second country after Russia to have commercial operating fast breeder reactor. Professor Jan. How do you evaluate this atomic development in India? Dr. Nimish, this is a very, very important and critical development in the nuclear energy program of India, which was designed by Dr. Homi J. Bhava almost uh, seven decades ago. The second stage means we are now entering a regime of a very critical technology, which is very difficult to master, where the fast breeder reactors become come operational and we are able to use the mix the fuel that is recovered from the first stage and using that fuel it will be possible to produce energy as well as new fuel will be generated and it will be possible eventually to generate uh, utilize our thorium reserves convert the, those thorium reserves into new fissile material and new fuel so this is a very thrilling news that i received yesterday, I was really thrilled in my heart because I have been hearing about it for a long time. Okay, we are doing this, we are doing this, but we have finally did it. So I really feel very happy about it. Today, Prime Minister witnessed the historic commencement of core loading at India's first indigenous fast breeder reactor at Kalpakam. Upon completion of the core loading, the first approach to criticality will be achieved as you already shared this great news, leading to generation of power subsequently. Uh, PM said that breeder reactor which produces more fuel than is consumed will pave way for eventual utilization of India's vast thorium reserves. PM posted on X today, earlier today witnessed the commencement of core loading of India's first and totally indigenous fast breeder reactor at Kalpakkam, which produces more fuel than is consumed. This will pave way for eventual utilization of India's vast thorium reserves and thus obviate the need for nuclear fuel import. It will help India achieve both energy self-reliance and progress towards net zero goal. Uh, Professor Jan, uh, kindly explain us in simple words that how Indian Atomic Power Program is going to help in power generation with thorium reserves. As we know, India has large uh, thorium reserves. Thorium reserves that we have in India, it cannot be utilized directly to produce power. Thorium-232 that is available in India is not fissile material. It has to be converted into a fissile material. And it can be converted into 233 uranium by transmutation, by bombarding neutrons on it. Now, in a fast breeder reactor, this becomes possible. So, in this second stage of the nuclear power cycle of the Department of Atomic Energy, this is what is going to be done. We will be able to master this technology of converting the 2 thorium into uranium-233, which will be the potential fuel on which the fast breeder reactors will run in the third stage. And again, they, it will be able to convert more 232 thorium into uranium-233. In a way, it will become a kind of, uh, these molten salt breeder reactors will become a kind of self-sustaining. They will generate power as well as they will generate fuel also. 
So this is the final stage into which we are planning to go. And uh, the second stage therefore represents a very important milestone in our journey for self-sustenance. Yeah. And uh, India's nuclear power program is aimed uh, to meet the twin goals of energy security and sustainable development. Uh, Professor Jain, I am excited to read the appreciation of India's nuclear power by World Nuclear Association. And I am mentioning the exact words by World Nuclear Association with, quote, India has a vision of becoming a world leader in nuclear power technology due to its expertise in fast reactors and thorium nuclear fuel cycle, unquote. How you see this global recognition of India's nuclear technology? And this is very interesting because I know that a couple of decades ago, they used to kind of, you know, chide India and think that we will never reach this goal. But this represents a recognition of the technology that the Department of Atomic Energy has been able to master over a period of time in spite of the various sanctions that were put in place. And most of the, in fact, nearly all of it is, has been done indigenously. That means it is independent of any sanctions now. We can go ahead in this program without any assistance from the developed countries. And in fact, we can give this technology to others in future. So we will be a technology giver because this development represents mastering several kinds of technologies which are very difficult and this has been achieved and this is the reason that they are now coming forward and praising, praising us. And today India is celebrating the historic milestone marking entry into the vital second stage of India's three-stage nuclear program. Professor Jan, what are the other stages of India's three-stage nuclear program? Uh, can you explain us briefly? Dr. Homi Bhava conceived this three-stage nuclear program in the beginning itself. So you can see that he was such a far-sighted person and uh, very visionary. The first stage consists of what we have already in our hands, the commercial reactors, for example, those working at Tarapur or Kalpakkam. For example, the Tarapur reactor, the boiling water reactor, and they kind of utilize the uranium fuel which we need to import. That actually is a kind of a constraint on us because we must have a continuous supply of uranium for these reactors. India doesn't have much uranium in its own reserves. So this is the first stage where we started the easiest stage where we have got nuclear fission happening in reactors and of uranium and power is needed. Realizing that we don't have uranium, this three-stage program was conceived by Wahaba and he proposed that the next stage will be a fast leader reactor where we will, be able, we will be able to use the mixed oxide fuel which consists of 238 uranium oxide and 239 plutonium oxide. And this plutonium-239 fission will produce energy and it will also breed new plutonium-239 by converting 238 uranium into 239 plutonium which is a fissile material again. And once this is done, then we will have the capability to put in a thick blanket of 232 uranium in such reactors. And we can convert this 232 uranium into 233 uranium, which is again a fissile material. All the fissile materials that we have, like 233 uranium, 239 plutonium, they are all odd numbers. These are odd number of neutrons that these nuclei contain. And this gives them the fissile nature. And uh, this third stage will be the final stage which will make us almost self-sufficient in the sense that we have enough thorium reserves to meet our power requirements for next several hundred years to come. Right. Professor Jan, this is one common perception that atomic power plants produce harmful radiation and nuclear waste. What kind of awareness is required to change this public perception? And I have also heard that uh, there will be no nuclear waste generated in India's three-stage nuclear power program. I will just answer briefly the last point that you raised, that we will not have much waste remaining after the third-stage program, which is actually yet to follow. 
and that is true also that we will have very little rescue remaining once that stage comes into operation however the besides that this misconception about the fear of the radiation that we have in our minds or in the general public is because of a couple of incidents that happened for example the nuclear weapons that were used in japan only twice nuclear weapons have been used nobody has used up any nuclear weapon after that and that also the studies now reveal that most of the devastation and the deaths that occur they were not because of the radiation itself but rather because of the heat that was generated the blast that was that occurred so radiation basically is a part of life we are always immersed in radiation we are constantly right. bombarded by radiation from all over the cosmos whole universe is full of radiation in fact we can say that we are born out of radiation without radiation we could yeah. not be born yeah. better to stop all kind of mis information and miscommunication related yes. to radiation or nuclear radiation exactly and towards achieving net zero carbon emission by utilizing clean and sustainable energy sources india is continuously moving towards nuclear and solar nuclear power plants in the country have so far generated about 870 billion units of clean electricity saving about 748 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions professor jan your comments on a nuclear power which will play an important role in india's achievement or achieving the goal of net zero by 2070 we are now dreaming of a vikasit bharat the developed india by 2047 and our power requirement by that time will be about 1200 or more gigawatts by 2032 this power requirement will be about 800 gigawatts right now what we are producing is about 250 gigawatts approximately i think right and that means we have to increase this power generation by several fold many fold and this requires a mix of power and energy resources we cannot achieve this by the traditional sources alone because the traditional sources of burning the hydrocarbons and the coal etc they produce a lot of carbon dioxide and uh, other such uh, harmful gases and uh, environmentally they are very degrading technologies environmentally and we know that the global warming is creating a lot of havoc all around the globe so right. it has been now almost uh, agreed upon by the experts that we cannot do anything without nuclear power if we do not use nuclear power in sufficient quantity and sufficient uh, in a very short time we will be late to control this environmental degradation of our planet so right. that has to be it has become almost a necessity now and we are going back to nuclear power in a good way so uh, fortunately the uh, nuclear power has be- now is much more safer than it was say 30 40 years ago because the right, reactors have become right. very advanced uh, exactly. so uh, the growth yeah. of the indian nuclear power program is imperative to meet the twin goals of energy security and sustainable development as a responsible It's- nuclear power with advanced technology india remains committed to expanding peaceful applications of nuclear technology both in power and non power sector peaceful purposes while ensuring the security of nuclear and radiological materials thank you professor thank you. ashok jain for your thank valuable you. comment and a great discussion on growth and development of atomic energy in india You are listening to a discussion on the growth and development of atomic energy in India. The participants were Professor Ashok Jain, nuclear scientist, and Dr. Nimish Kapoor, science communication specialist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks@gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.